Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in and pull up a chair next to the fire. It looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello. Weird, I can't see you now. I know, that is really weird. Well, I swear I waved, but... Um, so, this is the Gamers Inn. I am Jocelyn, that's Ryan, as I mentioned off the top of the show, and we thought we'd just give you a really quick intro of what, who we are and what our show's about since we are new to AMOVE TV as of tonight. Very exciting times. So here at the Gamers Inn, we usually give a really quick intro, what we've been doing you know, this week kind of thing and what's new with us, and then we jump into everything we've been playing for the last week. Then uh, we do really, really quick news segments, uh, basically anything that we thought was worthy of mentioning but not necessarily worthy of diving into headfirst uh, in terms of industry news over the last week. And then we have a topic, and that usually takes about 15 minutes at the end of the show, um, and it's just you know either a news story that we thought was worth mentioning or and actually diving into and talking about in detail, or... Um, something that has to do with the industry in general that may be making news that week or maybe just something that we want to talk about. So that's basically the show in a nutshell. Um, Ryan, why don't you tell everybody just a quick intro about yourself and what kind of games you play and all that kind of stuff, and then we'll jump into our first segment. Sure. I mean, well, my name is Ryan Murphy. I was born... Oh, let's see. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I won't go into details. Short. I would... Short. <laughs> Short, yes. Right. Well, I mean... If you're new to the show, probably should get out of the way. I'm sure Jocelyn's going to rub it in anyways. I am a Nintendo person. I do own a Wii U. Please, don't stop listening. Um, I do play Wii U games, but I play also other games. I have a PC, I have Xbox, and the PS3, although that's mainly a Netflix machine. Um, big Halo nut. Uh, what else is there to say, really? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. So, I used to be a Nintendo nut, They've kind of disappointed me in the last little while, so I pretty much rib Ryan pretty hard. But uh, I'm a PC, Xbox gamer now, mostly. I've been getting into a lot of Blizzard games, which actually fits a move really, really well. Um, I Let me see. Love Zelda franchises. Um, I love... Oh, Mass Effect <laughs> is oh. probably my favorite franchise of all time. So, yeah, that I mean, that's pretty much me in a nutshell. Um, we've been doing the show for about a year now, so we just switched over to AMOVE. We were uh, doing our own video thing on YouTube for a while, but uh, I think this is a great fit. We definitely miss Twitch. <laughs> Not that yeah. we don't appreciate Google Plus Hangouts on air and all of the automated stuff that they do, but having control over our system is so much better. <laughs> so. I think that pretty much brings us into what we're playing. So, Ryan, what were you playing over the Christmas holidays? Um, well, I mean, we briefly mentioned on our uh, Game of the Year episode that I... Ryan, if you can hear me, you should probably stop talking because I can't hear you at all right now. <laughs> okay, and we're having audio issues right in the middle of the show. This has literally not happened in a very, very long time, and I have no idea why because there's nothing flashing up on my screen saying it's not working right now, so... <laughs> oh no. Um, I can't hear you at all, Ryan. Okay, I'm going to take us off air. Sorry, guys. We'll be right back. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> Sorry about that uh, very quick little problem that we seem to have there, but uh, I think we've got everything figured out now. So, uh, Ryan, <laughs> what have you been playing? <laughs> oh, well, you know, uh, I was playing uh, Far Cry 3 over the break. Um, big open world game set in the jungle. Uh, you play a, you you basically play what I feel are like characters out of 90210. It's weird. So when you start the game off, there's this like music video type scenario where your your friends and whatever like skydive and everything. Then it quickly transitions into you uh, being held captive by this 
a wonderful character named Voss, who is probably like one of my favorite characters this year. Oh, really? He's just he. If you look up, just look up the intro to Far Cry Three, and if you want to see one of the most interesting, most insane characters to come out this year, like Voss is him, and I guess the voice actor looks exactly like him, <laughs> so it's actually really scary. Um, and he's just he's crazy, and uh, the game quickly starts off with you leaving this camp and and being shot at and everything, but it didn't quite hook me until about four or five hours into the game. I know it takes a while and being an open world game, it can be really tough um, to get sucked in and having to wait four to five hours is a long time to get sucked in. (laughs) Um, But as you move forward in the game, you quickly unlock these uh, powers that make you a better killing machine, I guess, for lack of a better term. Fair enough. And uh, you just, you're constantly getting new powers for your character. And I, I sort of like, shifted towards the uh, silent but deadly sort of like how people fart in cinemas I suppose Um, nice nice well I mean you know (laughs) that's how we work around here on the gamers end I'm just kidding I don't want to give a move the bad bad impression here Um, anyways so uh, one of the best parts about the about the game is you have to uh, liberate these outposts throughout the game and that basically uh, affects the amount of enemies that spawn in a certain uh, area of the map. So by taking over these outposts, you can do it in many different ways. You can do it by just run and gun, shoot everybody, kill everybody. You can be silent, kind of go around and, and silently killing people. You you have a, a knife, basically, and you go in and you do, like, takedowns, I guess, for lack of a... Crazy rogue call. moves? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, like, stab, throw knife. And, and that just gets crazier as you go. Like, it starts off with just, you know, sneaking up behind someone and then, you know, the standard grab and stab um (laughs) trademark boom (laughs) that's mine that is not in the game um but you know it quickly escalates to like you know you can drag him you pull the button and you can drag the guy away so the body doesn't get found by the bad guys to like a point in the game where you can stab him pull a pin on on a grenade and then kick the body into a a group of other people (laughs) and it's just First of all, like, they see this body fly out of nowhere and just land in between them, and, and that's enough to kind of spook them. But then it explodes and takes out all the bad guys, and it is one of the most satisfying things you can do in a video game. And, and I mean... Fair enough. <laughs> it's weird, because the more I describe myself playing this game, the more I sound like an insane person. A little bit. And uh, I'm okay with that, you know? I, I keep I, forgetting I, that you can't actually see me, so as I'm making all these hand gestures, you actually don't yeah, know what I'm talking about. I'm just assuming you're flipping me off the whole time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she didn't deny it, folks. Um, yeah, and, and that's an interesting little thing. But also, my favorite part of the Leo post, I think I mentioned this last week. where The bear thing? Of, yeah, it's a jungle, right? So there's animals everywhere. But for some reason, these bad guys feel the need to throw an animal in a cage and put it right in the middle of the outpost. So I, I'm obviously I'm going to shoot the cage and let the cheetah out, and the cheetah is going to kill all the people in the outpost. So uh, it, it's one of the most satisfying ways to take over an outpost. And, and really, like, that's the best side part of the game. Like, being an open-world game, there's a lot of side quests, tons of them. They all suck. Uh, <laughs> you know... That was yeah. That was my least favorite part of pretty much everything I've ever played except Skyrim. Skyrim had great side quests, but exactly everything else always just seems to feel tacked on, like Kingdoms of Amalur. Yeah, and again, like it's easy to say this is Skyrim in a jungle, but it really isn't. I mean, it does combat better than Skyrim, mainly because it's easier to design i guess like it's shooting and 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 stabbing as opposed to skyrim being first person magic and sword and melee uh and i mean the the the, i don't think the combat in skyrim was ever something people enjoyed for the like a lot it was an improvement but uh like on oblivion and and morrowind but it never wasn't necessarily groundbreaking in terms of video games in general yeah, exactly. Except, exactly. except for the shouts, when you have the connect and you actually get to shout at your TV. I, I haven't experienced that, but I've seen videos of that, and it just makes me happy. Almost uh, makes me want to go buy a connect. <laughs> I think they were $100 over the holidays. Yeah, they were. Not really worth... You could still shout at your TV and push the button, and it's sort of like the same Which thing. I totally do, all the time. <laughs> I'm glad you did. And um, 
that like I said, the side quests aren't really that great. Like you'll walk up to it like a, a guy, and all of the villagers that you talk to for these side quests sound the same. Which again, I guess in Skyrim, that sort of happens anyways. But that's not my main issue with it. Most of it is like, oh, you know, this temple used to be great. If you could find all the missing tablets, that'd be awesome. And they show you exactly where they are, and you pick them up, and mm. it is just kind of boring. But uh, the non-story side quests, like drive this ATV from here to here and you know you hit the points and that doesn't sound very interesting but first person driving is one of the most exhilarating things you can do <laughs> um, like one moment you're driving just fine and you say hey I'll just cut across this field and all of a sudden the field turns into this giant cliff into a waterfall <laughs> it's <Oops>. like <laughs> and it's great it you usually die but it's still a lot of fun um, and the main story missions are are actually really good they're they're well designed and mostly due to the fact that, that it's just it's really not a serious game and i know a lot of people have been saying that like it's not serious it's it's kind of a jokey joke poke fun at uh, these like you know what it feels like it feels like one of the good scary movie movies if that if that's something i could say <laughs> all right uh, not you, you ever see the scary oh movie? the scary like the the um not pun ones but the yeah. the funny ones the yes, they're making yes. fun of scream and all that kind of stuff yeah, yeah yeah okay so one of the good ones i think there was only one parody like, good one. <laughs> yeah parody not like ooh scary movie no yeah. like what like the comedy the movie and, scary movie <laughs> yeah it feels like it's parodying like just it's it's like that. It, it's hard to explain, but like the characters are really over the top, and you know, one of your buddies. So it's is, like um, Saints Row Three, where everything's just crazy over the top and but yeah. not quite in as your over face. the top as Saints Row Three, but that's that's a, a great example. And uh, it's if you just want to like get an idea, like YouTube, uh, any moment where Voss is on screen, like and he is just over the top and scary and just great. Just the way he talks to you is phenomenal it's probably one of some of the best voice acting uh, in in a game this year it's it really unfortunate it came out so close to the end of the year because i really would have loved more time with it but um yeah if you're if you're into first person shooters and you want to give this game a shot like it will consume you probably but it takes a while to get into it you kind of yeah. have to give it some time fair enough mm -hmm. um so i'm just going to talk very very quickly about my wow experience over the holidays because it was so much fun and i'm really looking forward to talking to hearing you talk about your next game that you played so i don't want you to i'm gonna just totally let you go on and on and on about that game i know it so i'm just gonna interject here with some wow before we get going um but yeah so i hit level 60 which means i get to fly which is the most badass thing ever i'm just like running and then I start casting my spell and then it, as long as I time it right I can kind of like do this crazy takeoff move all at the same time and I'm just like oh my god I'm amazing <laughs> it just made and oh traveling so much faster I don't have to worry about stupid alliance people trying to shoot me in the face because I'm way up there and they're way down there and it's so good so what I, amount are you using I'm, I actually, since I got my new system, I'm using the mount that I got when I did the uh, Scroll of Resurrection for you, so the Celestial Wyvern mount, which cool. is pretty awesome. At first, I was so disappointed because on my old system, it looked like crap. It was like boxy, and it was just blue, and you could hardly even see through it, and I was just like, this is dumb. Why did I bug Ryan for like eight months <laughs> just for this stupid mount that I'm not even going to use? But it's like all I've been using because it's got this cool particle space dust effect and it looks like a constellation kind of now. And it just like I can see right through its head, and, but all its teeth are still white. So it's like I'm looking through its head, through its mouth. It's ugh, this crazy, creepy, weird experience, but so awesome. Like... Hmm. I don't even know how much we played over the holidays, which we're going to talk about a little bit later, but, like, we went from level 52 to 60, I think, <laughs> which is, like, really hardcore for me. I know it's not hardcore for everybody, but, you know, like, I was playing WoW once a week, maybe, and we played, like, eight hours a day every day. <laughs> oh, wow. It was amazing. Yeah, exactly. Wow. <laughs> right. I walked right into that one. You did. <laughs> And so one thing that happened when we got to Outland is you get your first PvP quest, or at least the first PvP quest that I had picked up in the game. So it's 
not really that much. It's not that challenging because there's nobody there, right? <laughs> nobody else is at level 60 right now. So I kind of just ran around and got the three towers and that wasn't such a big deal, except there was like a dungeon in the middle or something. So there was a night elf and another night elf druid and I have no idea what level the second dude was, but the first dude I just kind of, well, first dude ran in, killed Joel, and then I was like, oh, there's a dude there. I'm going to kill him good. Revenge killing. And then so I killed him and then... His night elf druid friend came out dressed like a bear and was like, oh, can you kill my friend, eh? And there's just a little skull. So I'm wow. like, I don't even know what level he was. But he just basically went, rawr. <laughs> and then I died. I there's like, a, oh. <laughs> there's a weird rule, I guess. Uh, you, 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 RP, are you on an RP server or is it yes. RP PvP? I'm on Earth and Ring, so, so uh, it's, just, it's RP. just RP, yeah. Okay. You, yeah, you probably should have, like, slash bowed and... and tried to apologize you no i'm just kidding he probably no way man <laughs> it was my first chance to kill a dude in the alliance i was like i am going down swinging i don't even care but then he one shot at me so i wasn't really swinging i was more standing there like this you may have got one <laughs> in on the way down but i might like, have but <laughs> with the skull i think that's like it, there's a certain point like you can't see their level anymore it mm -hmm. might be 10 levels or 15. i feel like it's 10 or 11 somewhere in there yeah. but yeah anyway so they were more than that above me so yeah. um that was kind of disappointing because they were just camping at the at the entrance to the dungeon which uh joel and i shouldn't even have been at anyways we just weren't really sure where the third tower was so that's why we went there but then so the next day because it's a daily quest is to capture the three um, tower. So the next day I went back and there was someone leveling a panda that uh -huh. was doing uh, the quest but from the alliance side. And so I was like, she was only level 58, so I knew she couldn't fly. So I was just like, I came in from above and I was just like, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Oh, she still doesn't see me. This is amazing. I'm going to land right behind her. And I was like, dunk, dunk, dunk with my arrows. And then shoom, she was done. And I was like, yes. <laughs> and then I flew away. And then I saw her come back and get her body. And I was like, well, I think I can kill her another couple times, but that would just be mean. So I'm going to let her finish her quest. <laughs> wow, I, so I'm, yeah, the whole RP thing is a little bit lost on me. <laughs> wow. Well, not lost on me. Like, I mean, I do things like I won't kill dragon hawks because I have a dragon hawk pet. So, you know, like I, I, I get the, I, I have feelings for my character. I get the whole RP thing, but I, I find it so hard to be mean to other people that like I'm just like oh well I know what she's doing there and I don't really want to make her day awful because if someone was doing that to me I would be very sad and I would just rage quit so I'm gonna be nice and and just walk away and let her quest but uh but then um I was running through the next area and I took a wrong turn and ran right into a couple of alliance guards who one shot at me which sucked and then so I respawned and then there was this like alliance rogue dude who was like level 62 and I or no higher than that because I was level 60 by then. Um, but he was like just so I could see his level. He was like 68 or 69 or something. And he was literally just camping there and he just kept killing me over and over and over. And I was like, that's just mean. This is my main. I'm not as good as you. And I know that you can stop now. <laughs> So you were flagged then, right? Like As soon as you, yeah, because as soon as you um, retaliate against a guard, which oh. I did not even thinking, right? Is it just like, you know, arcane shot, arcane shot, you know, reflex. And um, so then you're flagged and you're flagged for five minutes. So um, I guess I probably could have just either respawned at the graveyard and waited the five minutes or I could have... Um, like waited because you get six minutes I think to run to your body so I mean I probably could have waited the five minutes but I'm not really sure how that timer works so I mean it might be five minutes from when you recover your body anyways the point is I was still flagged and I couldn't get rid of that flag <laughs> even though it was totally accidental and so he just kept killing me and I was like I don't even think you're getting honor kill points for this anymore which is something I have now honor kill points oh. <laughs> so like that's just your uh, like a quick test of PvP. Do you think you'll you'll do like? Have you ever queued for a battleground at all, or gone? No, into one of those? I haven't. No. I didn't really know that that was a thing. Like I had heard of battlegrounds, but oh. I thought it was like raids where it's like end game, but it's mm. not. So, no. I think that's something I might do because I actually really, really, really liked PvP, especially when I won. <laughs> well, they have like uh, they have capture the flag and you know like sort of a capture the zone type game that's a wrathy basin 
And then you have like Capture the Flag is worse on Gulch. And they have some old some newer ones that involve like ve- vehicular combat. I mean oh. that was after my that sort of After your time. Now. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> want to say that. Back in my day we only had Warsong Gulch and a thing called, I don't even know if they have all track valley anymore, which was like <laughs> this huge I think it was like forty on forty. Oh my god, it's been so long. Anyways, PvP is is a lot of fun if you just have to jump in and and kill some time. But now with like Dungeon Finder and scenarios, if you're more into the the PvE content, you have more options as opposed to before when really the only way to quickly group up, group up with people was to just jump into the PvP queue. And mm-hmm. that was your best way to play with other players. But it's just evolved so much since yeah. since then. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm gonna do more of, and I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to like I've seen people who are way more into WoW and have been playing for years and years and years tweet about battlegrounds and PvP and all that kind of stuff, and they're terrifying. <laughs> so yeah. a part of me is really looking forward to you know doing the whole PvP thing and and in a place where there's more people than just you know one at a time kind of one on one thing. But I find it very exhilarating, especially when I'm sitting there watching a timer as I'm capturing a tower and I'm just like, oh my god, someone needs to see me? Oh my god. <laughs> and, you know, I'm looking all around all the time and, I mean, I can just feel my heart pounding and I'm like, someone's going to one-shot me. <laughs> it's terrifying, well, yeah. but just in a good to... way, in a, like, exactly. this is exciting. And I find with questing in WoW, it's been getting a little bit repetitive and when we got to Outland we thought it would be really hard and we got there when we were level 58 kind of as soon as you could possibly go in we went in and it's just so easy especially with the two of us playing together so I find PvP adds that extra little like zap back into WoW of where it's not fun again because it's always been fun but you know it's mm-hmm. it's a challenge and it's exciting so I, I love it it's great cool That's so good. Are, do you think you're gonna get back into WoW anytime soon uh, Mr. In and Out, In and Out. I want to. I didn't get a chance to over the holidays. Spoiler alert, but because uh, <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it in the first section, so that should probably give you an idea. Yeah. I, I, I ran out of time uh, at mm. this, these holidays. Fair enough. I want to though. So, what did you have time to play over the holidays other than Far Cry Three? Uh, uh, a hell of a lot of Assassin's Creed. Oh, I'm so excited it's to hear, hear so about this. Much. <laughs> So I played through, I fi- well, I think I f- had finished Brotherhood the last we spoke, but uh, I also played through Revelations and started 3. Oh, so you started 3. You did, I, from no, the way I you have it written in the notes, I thought you played Brotherhood, Revelations, and 3, start to finish, all over the holidays. And I was like, oh. wow, you're hardcore. <laughs> well, the reason I, 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 w- I didn't want to rush through 3, uh, the, I did rush through Revelations. It's the only one I rushed through because I just, I had purchased three and i wanted to get to it because i was excited even though a lot of like it's been on a lot of like most disappointed lists and uh you know just i've heard a lot of negative talk about it Hmm. um people uh like people super excited about the series just like not finishing it and putting it down and and i'm kind of afraid that that's what might happen with bioshock because one and two were so good and three is such a departure from that world that i'm kind of worried that it's not going to be as great as i hope it's going to be um and i feel like maybe that's what happened with this one like obviously i haven't played all of the assassin's creed games and i haven't touched three but it just like i mean it's a different setting different characters it's all you know like guns and stuff and you know, American yeah. Revolution versus, like, you know, Italy. And I can see how people might be a little bit put off by that. Um, it's weird. I mean, so the first game was sort of its own thing. And two just kind of took it and ran with the idea. So people weren't really complaining when they played two because it was such a huge leap. Right. And Brotherhood and Revelations are sort of in this trilogy where it includes Ezio as the main character which is a great character and all that, but um, in in all three games sort of felt like you were in the same area, even though you weren't. So I think that's more a testament to the designers that they were able to create a brand new game, a brand new area, without people feeling like they were lost. Mm -hmm. You know, and I felt that as, I felt that. Uh, But with three, it's totally, it's a new area. It's, it's, it feels like even though you're, this is going to sound weird, but even though you're, 300 no sorry yeah 
300 or 200 years in the future, it feels like you're in the past in comparison to the Ezio trilogy. Okay. And that could be more because, you know, like Italy's been around for, over, like, I guess a thousand years. I don't know. For like ever. For like, yeah. <laughs> historians, please do not, you know, I know that there have been people in North America for thousands of years, but the uh, Italy sort of like Rome area. Ryan does been, history. <laughs> yeah. Getting lost here. It's this almost as hard I, as math. <laughs> This is why I play Assassin's Creed so I can learn my history, and, and I, that's even a, a better point is that these games are like they include characters that actually were historical figures, and you can actually go to Wikipedia and read about these people. And you know, obviously, Assassin's Creed game aren't like historical fact, but you know, I can have a conversation. Wait, with they're them. not. That's yeah. why I was. I thought this was a history book, dude. What is going on? No. There's no such thing as assassins and Templars <laughs> that people would like you to know about. I see. <laughs> Dig. The truth is out there. Um, Isn't that X-Files? Uh, nope. Pretty sure it's Assassin's Creed. Gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, so you're really, you're enjoying it overall, though. It's it's worth the... What did you... Did you tell us what you picked it up for? What was the price on your sale? Uh, I got Revelations on Steam for $13. And then I got Assassin's Creed 3 on the Wii U for $40. Uh, That's not um, too, too bad. No, I mean, um, it was pretty much $40 across the board. I think I could have got it for like 30 on PC. But you know, I wanted to try it on Wii U. And, and I'm starting to realize that uh, even just on consoles, like I miss playing PC games because they have the frame rate locked. So, like, you never notice a dip, and then you play yeah. on, like, a console. And I'm not saying it's just because it's on Wii U. I've noticed this on my Xbox and PS3 as well, because I did play Brotherhood on the PS3. Um, the frame rate sort of dips sometimes. But uh, Brotherhood, very similar to 2, enjoyed the heck out of it. It's a big game, as big as 2. Uh, Revelations, I felt, was smaller, and that's probably why I was able to get through it faster. And mm -hmm. I have a really funny story. It's embarrassing, actually. <laughs> Uh, tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it, tell it. I did a, I did a lot of traveling. You have to now. I know I have to because I mentioned it on air. Uh, and I have props here for it too. I, I did some traveling over the over the sum, or summer. Oh, it's cold. It's killing me. Um, I did a lot of traveling over the holidays. And after driving like two hours back to Morton's Coffee, I couldn't sleep. So I stayed up and played some Revelations. And I was at a point where there are these uh, outposts that you have to take back. And I didn't know how to like start the defense mini game there's like a mini game you have to start which is basically like a glorified tower defense game but anyways <laughs> i couldn't figure out how to start it so i'm like well to capture it in the first place i had to cap like climb up the giant tower and hit a button to blow up the tower so i tried doing that and every time i did the place was swarming with bad guys so they just shoot me down and i i climb up shut down climb up shut down climb up shut down dead and i'm like oh my god <laughs> I was playing with a controller, and I just got so angry, and I didn't realize what I was doing, and I just turned and spiked the controller on the ground. <laughs> and, uh, it, oh, my it, God, that's amazing. <laughs> it, busted, it busted the control stick really badly, if you can see that there. Oh, so no. it was broken at that point. The controller's broken. I'm like, I just, I just turned this $14 game into a $90 game. <laughs> so I'm going to put it in the garbage, and I'm still kind of fuming angry at this point. And as you'll notice, there's a concrete wall behind me, so I threw it up against the wall, and then that happened. So kind of just... So this is... Oh my god, gamer rage! <laughs> I know, and I'm just like, I swear, I don't have any anger management issues. Um, but I just figured I'd tell this story. And Your poor uh, controller! It had it coming. Uh, <laughs> but uh, that luckily, it is a... Uh, you know, it had a long life. It's about a six-year-old controller. Uh, it, its control sticks were kind of going on it anyways. So to teach me a lesson, I went to EB, and I'm like, i got to replace the controller, or else this is going to just keep bugging me. And I asked them, okay, how much are your controllers? Like, 60, they range from 60 to $70. Like, super yep. expensive. Controllers are outrageous. And they're only going to get more expensive. But, you know, you can usually find if you go to, like, a Best Buy or Future Shop or something, not so much EB, but definitely Best Buy or Future Shop, they usually have, like, the limited, one-of-a-kind, like, limited run type stuff. When they can't sell them all, like, they had a Fable 3 controller that looked really cool. They had a Halo one. They had a uh, 
Call of Duty. I can't remember if it was Modern Warfare or if it was Black Ops, but uh, they usually have theme controllers anyways. And if they can't sell them all, they put them on stupid discounts because they're not the plain black or plain silvery white whatever that a regular controller is. So, I mean, God, I think I saw the, the Fable 3 one for 14 bucks or something once, so... What? Yeah, stupid cheap. If you if you don't mind having like a theme controller, I like the look of the Fable Three one, but not everybody does. So, he but it's a, it's a thought. <laughs> Why? What did you did you go and spend seventy dollars? Yeah, and I bought a <laughs> themed one. I've been eyeing these <gasps> Halo Four controllers, <laughs> so they were not That's awesome. Now. I mean, Halo Four was a much better game than Fable Three, so I'm not too worried about that. Oh, but no, man. I'm, it's just it. You know, I had to teach myself a lesson because, like, I just couldn't believe that I did it. As soon as I did it, I'm like, I just ruined this controller, and I've never done that. And I'm thinking, like, what if it had been my phone or like <laughs> something even more expensive, or you know, the Wii U tablet? Like that thing is irreplaceable, basically. Like if you break it, you have oh, yeah, to call Nintendo she... and wait three weeks. <laughs> I was going to say, you can't buy those separately in the store, right? Because there is no game that uses two of those game pads. So yeah. I remember Nintendo saying that and me just being like, oh. Yeah. So, it, it, and it's weird. <laughs> I bought them. It's kind of, you know, you'd see through it, which I thought was funny. It's like, I've already seen the inside of these controllers. Why would I buy <laughs> on that see Because you smashed it to bits. That's not I something just, you should really. No. I felt like, I felt like I, I should have, I, I needed to learn my lesson. So, if you feel the need to throw controllers, have a big... I've actually heard this. People, like, who have problems with throwing controllers, they have, like, a giant pillow beside them whenever they play so they can just slam the controller into a pillow. And I'm not that bad. I was just, like, either... I was really tired but hopped up on caffeine. So I probably... <laughs> bad combo. Tried, tried to go to bed, but uh, I swear I do not have anger management issues. Yeah, that sure. Happened. And, uh, Speaking of anger yeah. management issues, <laughs> I got StarCraft 2 for Christmas. <laughs> nice. Which is so much fun. I played the first level of the campaign and then thought that I was just like, oh, I totally got this. Let's play multiplayer, Joel. And then he trounced me. <laughs> and then so I was like, hmm, I don't know about this. Play again. <laughs> and then so we played again. And he beat me again. But I scored twice the points. And then so I was like, Hmm, <laughs> I'm still getting beat. I don't like this. And, like, Joel is a StarCraft 2 player from, like, years ago. Like, or, well, I guess when it first came out, he played for, like, a year and was, you know, ranked and stuff. And I, I don't quite get the whole ladder thing, but he's, he's really good. Um, I am not. <laughs> but then, uh, so we played one more match against each other, and he didn't know I was having a good time. He was just like, maybe we should stop. <laughs> are you sure you still want to play? I'm like, no, I have to play. I have to beat you. <laughs> and um, I didn't. I came really, really close in the third game. But um, I, underestimate, I underestimated myself. If I had gone at him when I wanted to go at him, I would have destroyed him. But oh. I was just like, oh, well, if this is how far, I, how far ahead I am, that's clearly like he's not that, or he's way more far ahead than I am, and, you know, he's just being nice, and so if I go over to his base, he's just going to wipe me out again, and that's going to be the game, and I'm going to be mad, so I hung back when I should have just gone, Rah! So He was teching, I guess, the term. Teching? I have no idea. It doesn't do anything for you? No. It's basically when he, like, just builds up. You know how you have to, like, build up to second tier and third tier and stuff to get higher power units sometimes people yes. will not build any any first tier units like marines i guess they'll just oh, go straight okay. to like the battleships and like try to get there as fast as possible so when they're when oh they no he wasn't doing that he had a he had a pretty good uh, wow. mix of guys it's just that like i was just assuming he was way way far ahead because i didn't know what i was doing and i found i was wasting a lot of time which you know obviously time is everything in starcraft so I was wasting a lot of time reading all the tooltips because I've only played the first level of the campaign, so I know I have marines, and that's it. And I didn't have to build a base or anything. I just, you know, in the first level, you literally just go around this little snaky kind of path, and then you destroy a bunch of stuff with your marines, and that's it. And you have to, like, basically make sure you don't die. And that's your intro to StarCraft II. So I played that and then went, oh, multiplayer! <laughs> no. <laughs> you two should have done, like, a comp stomp. Well, we did. That was the next okay. thing that we did. Well, we went, um, me and him against uh, two medium computers and died. And then, <laughs> so... That's not a comp stomp. <laughs> and then, so, it, we did the two of us against 
one hard computer and that went better and I outscored him it was me and then him and then the computer and I was like yes suck it I win even though we were being all you know co-op-y but I still won <laughs> and that's where we left it and I think it's a good thing because he's not used to competitive Jocelyn any game that we've ever played has been with each other this is the first time we were going like head to head and he was just like I don't even think she's having fun and I'm like oh, I'm having fun this is amazing except you don't play Starcraft with the controller so pretend I'm not making this hand motion <laughs> I am already doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but it was so much fun, and I can see how people get totally addicted, and I was explaining the game to my mom, because I was telling mom what awesome Christmas gifts I got from Joel, and so I was telling her about this game, and she's like, wait, there's a ladder, and it's, like, it resets, and I'm, like, telling her all these things about how competitive it is, and how awesome it is, and, and she's just like, does he never want to see you again? <laughs> and I was like, aww. It's so true. And she's like, and God help the person who resets the ladder when you're at the top. <laughs> I was like, thanks, Mom. <laughs> Making me look like such a great person right now. <laughs> yeah. She's only mean and, and, and negative when she's playing video games. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's an outlet. It's an outlet. Yeah. So that brings me to what else I got for Christmas, which it actually arrived four days early and got here on Christmas Eve, which is the most exciting thing ever. I got my new doghouse, which is what we are currently streaming on. Ooh. It is awesome. It boots Windows in 10 seconds flat. It's like, I just, I click things and things happen, except for apparently your sound earlier in the show. <laughs> but that was not me. That was your mic. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, like, it's awesome. Everything I throw at it, it's just like, oh, hmm, interesting. Whereas my old computer was like, must run program. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So I absolutely love it. The guys at Doghouse were fantastic. So if you want to be just like me and have your very own Doghouse computer, you can go to doghousesystems.com and use the code THEGAMERSIN when ordering your new computer to show your love of all things TGI. Also, it will give you double the RAM for free. So 4 gigs becomes 8, and 8 becomes 16, but 16 does not become 32, because they don't do that, because, yeah. You That's all too know, many gigs. That, that is too many of the RAMs. <laughs> So a big thank you to Doghouse for their continued support of our show. Which brings us to our next segment, which is Quick Fire News. Go, Ryan, go! Quick, quick. Uh, Ubisoft Motion Pictures not just around for licensing. Chief Executive Jean-Julien Baronet... That's too French. ...told the LA Times that his company is around to ensure that films based on Ubisoft brands are neither poor adaptations of the source material nor poor films. And the company is doing that by taking an active role in the creative process. Baronet himself is intimately involved in casting, script, and filmmaking decisions, which a lot of gamers have stated is exactly what is needed to create the perfect video game movie. Currently, the company has a number of agreements in place for film and TV adaptations of Ubisoft franchises, including Assassin's Creed, Splinter Cell, Ghost Recon, and Rabbids. MMOs are battling it out with free trials and early access. Blizzard is offering 10 days of level 85 to 90 play for free if you're returning to the world of Warcraft. So that is the Mists of Pandaria expansion. They are also offering a free 10-day trial of Cataclysm if you're new to that expansion. Shortly after this was announced, SWOTOR comes out swinging. If you pre-order their Rise of the Hut Cartel expansion before January 7th, you'll get 5 days of early access to the content. Rise of the Hut Cartel will set you back 20 bucks. where Cataclysm is going to cost you, I don't know because I forgot to put it up because I totally forgot that I left blanks in my quick news, so I'm pretty sure Cataclysm is somewhere around 15 bucks, and Miss I think, is 35 or 40 assuming you have the prerequisite titles in the WoW series. Alan Wake Dev teases 2013 reveal. 2013 is wildly expected to be an amazing year of new announcements, and Remedy is joining in on the fun. On the official Alan Wake Facebook page, a post reads even greater Remedy news to come in 2013. Most are speculating this will be a proper sequel to Alan Wake, and Remedy is no stranger to hinting at just that. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. The War Z gets hacked multiple times. A couple of weeks ago, we mentioned the War Z getting yanked from Steam for misleading players in its game description, noting features that were not actually available yet. Now, gamers are taking revenge. The War Z has been targeted multiple times in the last few days by DDoS attacks on their login servers. As of right now, the issues seem to be mostly fixed, except for players who purchased through Steam before the game was pulled. And the moral of the story is... 
go don't go up against gamer geeks when money is on the line <laughs> i forgot a word there jeez i shouldn't write these when tired <laughs> Uh, new Tomb Raider will have multiplayer. Normally, we would scoff at the fact that a primarily single-player focused franchise will have a multiplayer offering in its newest release. However, with the pleasant surprise that is Mass Effect 3 and its multiplayer, and its multiplayer, weird, I will remain cautious, cautiously optimistic. The team behind Deus Ex Human Revolution and Thief 4 at IDOS Montreal have been developing the mode while Crystal Dynamics' focus has been on the single-player portion. More details are expected this month at CES, so stay tuned. Zynga and EA are pulling games off Facebook. Eleven Zynga titles, including Petville, Mafia Wars 2, Forestville, Vampire Wars, and Indiana Jones Adventure World, have officially been taken off Facebook, leaving only messages redirecting people to other Zynga titles. I would be super pissed if I spent real money to build a pet house or whatever you do in Petville, and then one day there was just a message telling me that I should go farm corn. They aren't the only ones pulling out of Facebook, though, as EA is also shutting down some of its social titles, like World Series Superstars and EA Sports PGA Tour Golf. Interestingly, EA is not pulling The Sim Social off Facebook, but The Ville is on Zynga's chopping block. Not Adventure World. <laughs> so sad. Fez coming to other platforms in 2013. It has been an interesting year for Phil Fish and his company, Polytron. In a recent blog post on the website, Fish reflected on the last year and gave a few tidbits on what to expect in 2013 from the company. First off, Fez will be ported to other platforms. Yay! No specifics were given on which platforms or timelines, but it's a safe bet to expect PC. Fish also mentions doing something interesting with the soundtrack and the possibility of a U.S. branch. I love the soundtrack. Angry Bird sells 30 million copies over Christmas. The 30 million downloads happened the week between December 22nd and the 29th, with 8 million downloads coming on Christmas Day alone. There is no breakdown by device or by game, but Rovio did say that Angry Bird Star Wars has occupied the top spot in the U.S. iTunes chart since its release November 8th. I will admit, I was curious about Angry Bird Star Wars, so I downloaded the free version. But it's just as frustrating as all the other Angry Birds games. And it seems that one out of every two new smartphones that were activated over Christmas also downloaded Angry Birds. I must just be missing something. Which brings us to our topic this week. What kind of gaming did you do over the holidays, Ryan? Oh, well, you know, I, it's weird. I think the reason I didn't play a lot of the games I wanted to was because they were primarily, like, single-player, Ryan is playing his video games, leave me alone games. <laughs> um... And because I had, I had uh, well, obviously Ashley was here from time to time. <laughs> she only worked a few days. But uh, also Ashley's younger sister was over a lot, and we were playing, like, we, we played, played. well, first of all, we were at family events, and every family event we were at, they were playing Just Dance. Oh. So, I whipped me... out the uh, Super Nintendo for oh. our family Christmas, and we played Old School Mario Kart, and we played nice. Mario All-Stars. It was super fun, especially with all the smack talk going on between myself and Joel's stepdad. It was awesome. <laughs> so were you playing, like, is it, you can only play two-player, like, race against each other, right? Uh, yeah, or you could do the Grand Prix, which is uh, the two of you with everybody else. So I asked him, I'm like, do you want to go head to head or do you want to like throw some other people in the mix and stuff? He's like, no, I don't like racing games. Let's just keep it to the two of us. And I was like, okay. And I was still like, zoom, zoom, zoom. And he's like, which one's the go button again? <laughs> How do I steer this? Thunk, 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 thunk. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, but he was probably better at All Stars, right? Well, yeah, because he used to put, like, he had played uh, Mario back when it first came out, so. But it was really funny because it took him a long time to catch on, so he played the same level, like, over and over and over again, and at one point he was like, oh, I think I'm getting better at this. I'm like, well, yeah, you've played the level 12 times. <laughs> he just kept dying. He did, yeah. Oh, but uh, but it was it was fun. We had a great time together, so, yeah, it was great. Was so, sorry, you were saying? No, I was just saying that, uh, you know, whenever we were at like family events they all had up a wii and they all play this just dance game i don't own just dance um there's not that there's anything sure. wrong with that. i gotta say for you know ubisoft puts out just dance every year a new one and um they sell like hotcakes for a good reason they actually they're pretty they're pretty decent dancing games like you can do you can be good at that game without even trying or you can be good at that game and just 
danced like a bust a move drunk person because there's a lot of drunk people playing this. I'm not gonna lie. You would have to be, I would think. <laughs> what? No, I was I was sober the uh, the entire week, uh, uh, and I'm not being sarcastic. I was driving a lot, so uh, I was I was the uh, DD. But uh, there were some drunk parents who. After a couple of drinks, you were able to throw the controller in their hands, and they actually danced. So that was entertaining. That's fun. <laughs> um, and you know, it's just. And then they got the new one for Christmas Day, and I'm like, well, let's give it a shot. And and like I said, like they're little kids, so they can like do all the moves without hurting themselves. Whereas I'm just like, you know, kind of moving my hand and maybe twitching my leg from time to time. <laughs> nice. Um, and it, it's it's it was interesting. I don't think I'd ever buy it, but uh, I could see the appeal for sure. Nice. Oh, plus I danced Gungam style, so that was fun. Oh, yeah, I read that that was part of the Just Dance I don't, Rit, playlist Rit, now? I don't know what you call it. Lineup? <laughs> but uh, Either would work, but we yeah. had to buy it. Like, we went into the store. Oh, my God, you paid money for that? I didn't. They did. Uh, like, not my game. Uh, I think maybe I gave them points for Christmas last year, and they had some left over. So I guess maybe technically I bought it. But it You bought Gangnam it. Style. That's fine. <laughs> it's a great song that I play like on average zero times a day <laughs> I that. so uh you mentioned some of the games that you had that you wanted to play over the holidays that you didn't actually get a chance to and that was because they were more single player stuff so is that some stuff that you picked up on steam or what yeah i picked up a few titles on steam i wanted to try dishonored and i never got a shot at it so that was weird because i really was really hoping to try dishonor but i did try uh lord of the rings lego <gasps> I never did get Lego Lord of the Rings. I missed the $10 sale, and then every other time I saw it, it was like $5 off or something, and I was like, but you were like 60% off, and I missed you. So I just, it's like now I just have this like brain block when it comes to Lego Lord of the Rings, and I'm like, it's $10 or bust. Yeah. Well, I mean, if I see it go on again, I'll let you know. Yeah. But, uh, I, played, I played a little co-op, and for... A game you think is sort of geared towards kids. It it sure doesn't guide you. Like we well, were getting good. lost like constantly. Like right, because it's, like, it's it's the first open world Lego, right? Uh, maybe. I'm pretty know. sure or, it is. World. Yeah. Like they sort of they sort of like throw you into the Shire, and it's like they don't even tell you what you need to do. It's sort of like you explore, and then it's like, oh, okay, here's where I need to go next, and it starts the next story scene, and. I mean, there's something really awesome about, like, the scenes being recreated in, mm -hmm. in Lego. In Lego. And, like, actual voices and still, like, they sort of, like, mess with canon by, say, making, you know, I can't really think of an example right now, but, you know, something would happen in the background that totally would not happen in the, in the uh, right. movies because it's, like, one of the hobbits, like, cooking something in the background and making, and then stepping in the fire. Setting and, himself on fire or something, Yeah. yeah. It's it's the Lego sense of humor that they've applied to Lord of the Rings that I think is going to be awesome. It was very similar in Harry Potter, especially with the uh, years, I guess, five to seven. Is It's a very dark story, right? But they still have these, like, crazy bits of humor just thrown in in the background, so. Yeah, it's hammed up, is how I like to put it. Yes, yes. Did you find that the Steam sales were, in comparison to Black Friday, better, worse? Did you just buy everything on Black Friday so you didn't really care about the December sales? I think the problem is I bought a lot of these things, um, like even prior to the sales, I bought them through Green Man Gaming at, a, at a, a decent percentage off. But then during the sales, they were even more off. So I kind of felt a little like, oh, you know, I should have waited. Yeah. But th I think this holiday sale has been fantastic. There's just been a lot of titles on sale, like just crazy. I found that there were... In terms of like versus the uh, the Black Friday sales, it was either all the same sales again or nothing I was really interested in. With the exception, I did get um, Black Ops 2 for like 20% off, which is huge because they never go on sale like ever. So even like uh, Modern Warfare 3 was only 30% off and that was that's the um, Call of Duty title from a year and a bit ago. So, you know, I was, I was impressed. I was like, wow, that's actually a sale I wasn't expecting to see. So... Um, they got me there, but then, like, there was, like I say, the Borderlands was 30 bucks, and, and Dishonored was, I can't remember how much, but, you know, about 50%, and those are all the sales that they had on Black Friday, so I just, I wasn't that impressed with, uh, with the holiday sales. Not like I was with the Black Friday. Black Friday, I was like, oh my god, there's so many games! But I might have just bought everything I needed, so. Mm hmm I mean, I, I think I picked up a couple smaller titles as well. I picked up, uh, I Am Alive which I've been eyeing for a while. 
Um, it's that post-apocalyptic game. And right. I didn't get a chance to play it. I don't think I played a lot of Steam games, to be honest. Just Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, I, uh, um, I did pick up Bioshock for Joel because he really wanted to play it because he wants to play through one and two and before I get three. Um, and that was four bucks on Steam, I think, which is awesome. And then I got... Oh, I haven't bought it yet, but Amnesia is on for 75% off. It's been on for 50% off a whole bunch of times, but it was on for 75% off today, so oh, wow. I might pick it up. Yeah, because I figure for five bucks, I, I have a feeling I'm not... Because that's the one you played during Extra Life, right? That was the scary game you played? Yeah. yeah I don't know if I'll be able to do that. That was terrifying. Because that's another one where you don't actually get a weapon, right? Well, I mean, you... I can't remember. I don't think you get a weapon. You're encouraged to basically run away. I think it's more... It's less like Slender, where in Slender you're sort of like... You just run for your life. In this one, you can't just run for your life. You kind of have to run and hide. And then there's that tension of the mm. bad guy walking beside you and not seeing you. Sort of like thriller type stuff. But uh, Right. Yeah, well, definitely cool. scary. Um, so did you get everything or anything you wanted for gaming this Christmas? Uh, I did. I mentioned the eShop credit. I did get like $40 for the eShop. So I bought Ninja Gaiden, played it for nice. an hour and uh, I, I like it. I like the game, but I just haven't had a chance. And it was yeah. interesting. It took like, okay, the Wii U, it's great that you can buy games, full games on the system. That's really cool. I love it. However, it took like, Steam, okay, Steam <laughs> has been really spoiling us, okay? You download yes. a six gig game, it takes like an hour and you're good to go. You're playing it yeah. in no time. On the, the Nintendo platform, uh, it took like three hours to download, then an hour to install. Mm. It was crazy. And I'm like, I don't really kind of feel like playing this. Oh, I'll yeah. play. And I tap it. It's like, oh, now we got to update. <laughs> <laughs> Steam. Nice. Steam has ruined gaming for yep. me. Yeah, uh, totally. Eh, once I got around into the game and started playing it, it was still really cool that I didn't have to like go talk to some guy at EB and say, mm -hmm. you know, give me Ninja Gaiden 3 for the Wii U. And it's like, do you have a Wii U? <laughs> it came out for like six months ago on 360. I'm sorry. For those who work at EB, I apologize. It's probably like one in... Like one in all of them, voice. yeah. Yeah, maybe. And I then, find uh, that Steam, t Steam totally ruined me because now that I have a computer that can actually kick the shit out of all of the... Sorry. <laughs> out of all of the graphics, like I'm just... Oh, man, it's awesome. I, I'm just like, PC, all the time. <laughs> Especially mm. with my controller now. You should definitely uh, get all your games on PC now that you have a, a beefed-up system because, uh, like I was saying with Assassin's Creed, just the locked frame rate is fantastic. Mm. And games are always going to look better on your PC as long as your computer can, can handle the game. That's like, true. Uh, there's, you, you can't argue with that. Yeah, I also got, uh, Joel was super awesome and bought me your biggest disappointment of 2012. <laughs> wow. I got, I got SWOTOR. <laughs> Someone didn't listen to our Game of the Year. No. I believe it was purchased previous to that, but uh, I'm looking forward to trying it. Although I'm not 100% familiar with, apparently there's um, restrictions on their free to play. You can play free to play, but like there's less classes open to you or something and that's really lame. So if it's something where I have to have a subscription to unlock everything, then I'll probably just take Photor back and put it towards my Bioshock pre-order or something. But do you, you know, know, do you know anything about it? I was just going to say, if you opened it, you're not going to be able to take it back. No, I didn't open it. No, I didn't. Oh, okay, good. Well, I figured you'd know that. <laughs> being a gamer and all just test it um this subscription i think it's class uh race uh com combinations that are locked down so you, oh, okay you, you may be able to play a human smuggler but you won't be able to play a twi'lek smuggler is that a race i don't i'm not big on star wars sorry <laughs> i know there's like an alien that's blue and has the weird tentacle thing that's coming out of his head that is oh weird. that guy yeah um, yeah, there are, you might want to look up the, the race, uh, sort of combinations that you can do, because there are a lot of lockdowns, mm -hmm. um, that would probably Which be Which is the kind of lame, like, you're either free or you're not. Yeah, I think, I think that's, they're sort of, it's weird, like, they're gonna, they're gonna find that free-to-play isn't doing it a lot for them, and then they're like, 
okay, now we're even more free to play. Yeah, now. now we're actually free. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, like, uh, I was looking on the website today to get the price of the expansion, and they're offering the expansion for half price if you're a subscriber, which I think that's awesome. I think subscriber bonuses are one thing. I think locking down functionality of your game, not cool. So, so would it be cheaper for you to pay for a month and buy this, buy the expansion if you wanted it, or...? I don't know. Actually, I don't even know how much a month subscription of SOTOR is. Um, I imagine it, there's no way it would be... Uh, it would have to be on par with what WoW has. So oh, I it would have to... I would say it would have to be way lower, considering everything you get for free. Like, just to unlock a couple of race class combinations, that's not worth 15 bucks. That's not even worth 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. I would say if it's not 5 then, you know, they're it's, reaching. It's 15 I'm I'm... I remember paying fifteen a month, and I doubt it. Oh, was. I think it, I think it was fifteen before, but I'm saying with their new free to play model and their subscription, I would be really shocked if it was still a full fifteen dollars a month. That would be ridiculous. Yeah, hear me, well, hear me, well, Swotor. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> it, it can hear you, and it's trying to get out of the shrink wrap, so you can't take it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> That's what that sound is. That would be so creepy if I went under the tree and my like just the corner was unwrapped on my Star Wars or something. I'd just be like. Uh, get this out of my house. <laughs> I don't care if I'm returning up in the garbage. It's yeah. haunted. <laughs> haunted Swotor. Nice. Um, so, I don't know, do you have anything else that you particularly wanted to talk about, about your gaming habits over the holidays? Or? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I That pretty much covers it, but I did get some sweet gaming stuff for Christmas. I got this from Ashley, two little action figures. She said she didn't Aww. get anything with gaming, but then I opened... Actually, I had the Master Chief one before Christmas, and then she got me this one. She actually bought it. Before, That's really sweet. <laughs> she bought it before uh, before I went and bought the Master Chief one because I was going down the toy aisle looking for it constantly, like a 12-year-old. <laughs> and uh, she kept saying, like, okay, you buy this, and you're not allowed to go down there anymore. And I didn't even think about it, and I guess yeah. she was worried that I was going to ruin Christmas by buying <laughs> toys that were... Already um, purchased. Well, you're not supposed to buy things for yourself before Christmas, which is, uh, I always get in crap from Joel, because especially when there's Steam sales, I just go on and I'm like, I buy all the things, and I'm just like, but it's only $5! It's only $10! <laughs> and he's just yeah. like, yeah, but it might be under the tree. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm bad. And we went over this on our Christmas episode, like, I am the worst. Yeah. The worst. There's a reason I got gift cards and uh, awesome gifts, but just no games. Yeah. Right? I mean, sad grapples, I suppose. <laughs> uh, so that pretty much wraps up our show and brings us to the listener feedback section, although we don't have any this week other than quite a few Twitter messages congratulating us for our move to a move, which, now that I play StarCraft, is a reference I totally get. <laughs> don't get it. Explain it. I don't understand. It's the attack move. So you oh, do really? the A move to, uh, oh to move and then attack. Oh. How Ryan in the uh, the introduction to a move brochure. We oh, got, I don't know. I don't know. They They're gone. slacking. <laughs> that is such a lie. I put that actually. I don't... <laughs> so gosh. you can visit us on the web at gamersinpodcast.com, where you can find our live feed. Actually, now our live feed is at a move. <laughs> you can find our live chat and our forums. Email the show at info at gamersinpodcast.com, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter. You can find me, Jocelyn, at gis gamer. Ryan is at R. Murphy, and don't forget to follow the show at The Gamers Inn. You can also find us on Facebook and Google+. And don't forget to leave us an iTunes review, as it's the best way for our show to reach new listeners. So before we go, I just want to give a quick shout-out and thank you to my brother Greg for creating our awesome music. You can find him on Twitter, at Sounds Influence. We would also like to thank Joel Duggan of Starcross Online, who drew our Twitter avatars and created our logo. You can find him on Twitter, at Joel Duggan, or read his comic at StarCrossOnline.com. So thanks for staying at The Gamers Inn, and remember to tune in next week. Bye, everybody. I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs>